Hey everybody, it's Lisa Miller and I've got Harrison Smith with me again. And we got such great traction last week on this really impromptu video we did about delivery. We thought we'd jump in today and do another one. But today's topic, we just want to drill down into the blog that we just posted that was called Deciphering the Delivery Dilemma. And honestly, Harrison, were you surprised at how much traction this this blog has been getting? <laughs> yeah, totally. It's been overwhelming. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's been shared and reposted and so many comments and it's just been crazy. So we thought that that voiceover is always helpful to really understand the data versus, you know, just reading it in an article. So where we start our conversation in this delivery path to purchase is brand decisions. And Harrison, have you ever had that conversation? Harrison, what do you want for dinner? How does that usually go? <laughs> I don't know. What do you want? And then I say, I don't know, what do you want? And it just gets bantered back and forth and somebody passes out a brand and vetoes a brand. But at the end of the day, you land on a brand, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And so one of the things that I think surprised so many people in this descent, you know, delivery dilemma and path to purchase is that nine out of 10 delivery occasions start by knowing the brand, nine out of 10. And I think that was really, really shocking to, I think, everybody out there. But when you do peel it back and you look at it by generation, and, you know, Harrison, I know we've talked about this a lot, it is a little bit different by different cohorts. And I loved what we were talking about um, just a little bit ago about what is really the advantage for you on doing that starting at a third-party app versus starting at a restaurant app. Yeah. So I feel like a third-party app is kind of like your one-stop shop, right? You have every single different delivery place with one delivery experience, one UI, one interface. Uh, it just standardizes everything. So that's totally where I, and I think a lot of Gen Z turn to. Yeah, I think that's a great point. But I think that the, the insight underneath the insight is for all of you operators out there trying to figure out delivery, you've got to start with reminding people about your brand and why your brand should be chosen. Because if you don't, when that bantering, what do you want for dinner? I don't know, what do you want for dinner? You won't win that choice if they don't know your brand. So you can't rest assured that they'll find you even on the third party apps. But I think that that's a really powerful insight. Brands matter in the delivery path to purchase. So let's talk about that next point, which I also think Harrison was a really interesting point. And in fact, this question, we just got the data back yesterday. <laughs> and it came from a direct a message that I got to say, well, what about contactless versus contact? And I love this one because this is such a generational thing. So it couldn't be more split. We basically asked a question that said, do you prefer restaurant delivery with the delivery driver handing you your food versus do you prefer contactless? And it could not be more evenly divided, a third, a third, a third. But I know everybody's out there going, oh, but that's got to be different by different age cohorts. And you are not mistaken. But Harrison, tell us about what we learned again just yesterday about this, this, this issue here. For sure. So Gen Z, 59% of them prefer contactless. As we get older and older groups, that number continues to drop down. It's almost a straight line trend going all the way down to boomers at 21%. So Gen Z prefers contactless three times more than boomers. That's, yeah, that is just crazy. And I think one of the things that's so interesting, Harrison, that we talked about is when you think about Amazon drivers, you know, Amazon, they come to your door, they just drop off, they ring the bell. But then when the, the delivery driver, there's just something for me. And, you know, obviously I'm older than you. There's just something about having somebody give me my food versus the contactless. And so I think for all the operators out there, I just think that it's, it's not a one size fits all. And we have to really understand that different generations, different needs are out there. So we can't just think of it as one size fits all. But I think if we... 
We hope you like this video idea. We're going to experiment, try to do a few more of these. But one of the questions also, Harrison, and maybe um, you can take the slide down, but one of the other questions would be that we were just talking about is what maybe all of this varies by how many people you're ordering for. So tell me about what we were saying is that, you know, what versus one person versus ordering for others. We were just talking about that. Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's a huge dichotomy between the two groups, right? People who are ordering for themselves are like mostly my age or at work or something like that. When you're ordering for a family, you have to completely think about that differently. It just completely changes the dynamics of it. So we're really interested in studying that data to see if there's any extra insights in there, see if there's anything we can peel out. Yeah. And I think um, one of the things we love, uh, just talking to everybody out there, one of the things we love is please send us comments, send us messages, because literally this research gets better each and every wave, because you guys out there are asking us great questions that then we can dig into more. So until next time, but we'll keep digging into all the consumer insights on restaurant delivery and more, but have a great day, everybody. And thanks so much, Harrison. Of course. Thank you.